Good morning and welcome to our outdoor worship here at the Promised Land Retreat Center. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us today. I am Reverend Jane Wagner. I'm the interim pastor for Emanuel Congregational Church in Watertown. Also with me today is Victoria Landers, who is a member in discernment with the United Church of Christ, and Leanne Bennett, who is filming for us. Today is a special day in that we will be participating in communion, and we would like to be able to bring you into that holy moment from home. And so I would encourage you as we listen to the prelude, that is, if you have not yet prepared for it, that you slip out into your kitchen and grab a, a little piece of bread or perhaps a small cracker and a little something to drink. Uh, it does not have to be a loaf of bread. It does not have to be a huge goblet of juice. Just a little tiny bit of something that you can consume during that time. And it will seem strange to you today uh, to not be in the church with everyone, but we will be together in the spirit. And so I hope that as we do this, uh, Jesus told us to um, come to the table often in remembrance of him. I hope you'll also be coming in remembrance of other times when you have been able to have communion with the entire body of the church. And that together as we consider those things, we will feel the touch of the Holy Spirit and his presence during that holy moment. Please quiet your heart and your mind as we listen to the prelude now, if you need to. This will be the time to get to that bread and juice. to proclaim the wonders of the Lord. Get up, for we are beckoned by the risen sun to respond to grace undeserved. God is calling us, for we are united by the Spirit to follow Jesus on the way. Come, let us worship God. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, we gather together this morning to worship and to praise you. We gather to lift our voices in prayer, in song, and in thanksgiving for the many blessings you shower upon us. We ask that you open the eyes of our hearts so that we can clearly see and experience your loving presence among us. Open our ears, Lord, so that we can hear what you are asking us to do. May we be moved by your Holy Spirit to go forth to love and serve our neighbors who are struggling during this trying time. Today's scripture is taken from Mark chapter 9 verses 21 through 24. Jesus asked the Father, How long has this been happening to you, to him? And he said, From childhood, it has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. 
child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. The second scripture reading is taken also from Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you have not yet met the beggar and blind man, Bartimaeus, today is your day. The scripture in Mark tells a tiny and yet life-changing piece of Bartimaeus' story. He did the strangest thing. He believed that Jesus could heal him. And because he did believe, Jesus did heal him power of positive thinking? Just saying. What if you asked a class of first graders if they could draw? They would likely all raise their hands. Well, what if you asked a group of 25 adults if they could draw? They would likely all say that they could not. Because life has a way of knocking us down. We begin to think we can't do things, and sure enough, we can't. It's why I wanted to be a music teacher. It wasn't to focus on my own love of music, and it wasn't so that someday I could direct a magnificent choir, or I could encourage a great talent to be born. It was to help children find the beautiful instrument that God had placed within each one of them before the world could tell them that they couldn't sing. I met a young girl when I was 15. She was a couple years younger, and I spent a lot of time at her home with her and her somewhat large family. And I'm not sure how old she was when her family decided that she was clumsy and began telling her that, but she was quite sure of it. And when I ran into her many years later, within a few minutes of conversation, she spoke of herself and said, Oh, Jane, you remember how clumsy I am. The power of negative thinking. Tell someone over and over that they are useless, and they will begin to think that they are. Tell them that they can do something, and they will come to expect that they can. There is another story of healing in chapter 9 of the book of Mark. And Vicki also shared about that story of the little boy who was healed. He had some sort of seizures, and the father had heard enough about Jesus that he was hoping that Jesus might actually be able to heal his son. And the father said to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, 
everything is possible for him who believes. And immediately the father said, I do believe. Help me to overcome my unbelief. And Jesus healed that boy also. We can't always have enough faith for every difficulty in our lives. We get beaten down by life, and too much negativity drives back our faith. But if we just look around for Jesus, we'll find him in places where he is obviously present, and our faith will begin to grow again. Sometimes he speaks to us through scripture or spiritual writings or friends. In late 1977, I was getting ready to change the course of my life. Things had happened, both good and bad, so that I knew I could no longer continue on the path that I was on. How could I go forward in a new and different direction. Who would be there to help me? No parents, no dependable siblings, next to nothing as far as assets. And then on December 31st, 1997, I read the following devotion in the Daily Bread, the little devotional books that, that they put out, I believe it's a Baptist publication, and these are the words of that devotion. See if God speaks to your heart today in the same way that God spoke to my heart all those years ago. Perhaps today you are right at the rim of a shadowy unknown. You know that you must move forward, but you can't see 10 feet ahead. God has brought you to this place not to abandon you, but to show you perhaps as never before that you can trust him completely. When you come to the edge of all the light you have known and are about to step off into darkness, faith is knowing there will be something to stand on or that you will be taught. went straight to my heart and my damaged spirit. I did believe, and I knew without a doubt that Jesus would be there to help me and to strengthen my belief along the way. I still have a copy of that devotion. It's framed, and it's uh, in my office on the shelf. And I had a friend one time who desperately needed encouragement and her husband was facing um, Lou Gehrig's disease and they didn't know how they were going to get through that and I gave her that framed message from God and some years after her husband passed away when I was facing yet another crisis she gave it back to me and it's on the shelf still in my office to remind me when my faith falters. The Nicene Creed was written by the early Christian church in the first hundred years after the life of Jesus Christ. It should probably be read in the original language to get the most complete message. But as many of you know, I have a learning disability in foreign languages. I would have no clue what it meant in the original language. Most people today translate the last line of the creed into English in this way. They say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. But the original translation, I am told, is a little different. The literal translation is, I expect the resurrection. Not believe, but expect. Bartimaeus did not just believe he could be healed, he expected healing. There's a big difference. When Jesus called Bartimaeus forward, Bartimaeus stood up and he flung his beggar's coat off. 
he was done with it. It had protected him from the elements, cushioned his bed on the hard ground, and kept others from seeing the vacant eyes that he was supposed to spare people from looking into. For years, it had been his greatest comfort and his constant companion. Bartimaeus was convinced as he stood at the edge of all that he had known and was about to step off into the darkness that there would be solid ground under his feet and that would Jesus would teach him how to fly. He knew that the darkness could hold him back no longer and that as he took that step of faith, he was going to step into the full light of Christ. May the same be true for us in these days. Our path seems to be unclear. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We are not sure when or even if it is safe to step out of the protection of the last weeks. But we, may we never doubt that Jesus is out there, perhaps behind a mask, perhaps behind every mask. May we expect to experience him in the holy meal to come and to see him in the events of the weeks of our coming days. May it be so. Amen. As I said, uh, it was the Nicene Creed that was written so long ago that I talked about earlier, and to prepare us for communion and to proclaim what we believe, Vicki and I will be sharing in that creed in this time. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we move into communion, Together, Vicki and I will share in the confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. 
free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. While Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Thank you, Jesus, for having met us here at this, your table. We thank you that once again you have brought us all together from many places to this one table with your Holy Spirit, joined together in your power and in your name. Amen. Go, confident in the knowledge of God's steadfast love for you, assured of the healing touch of Jesus upon you and emboldened by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.